I need to grow. And I felt like Montgomery, Alabama was not letting me grow. So we ended up moving to Atlanta, December 2009. She was four months pregnant. We both left our jobs. We just put in our two weeks notice. We came to Atlanta, rented out a town home. I ended up opening up a satellite office in South DeKalb Mall. If everybody knows what South DeKalb Mall is <laughs> on Camilla yeah. Road. Um, I mean, it was such an experience, but I ended up opening up a satellite office just like a kiosk in the middle of the mall right in front of Foot Locker. My whole thing was I knew that my target market was EIC or you know our income credit tax clients, and I feel like I can be there to capture, capture those clients. So me and her, with her being pregnant, we ended up opening up that kiosk, and we worked in that mall, me and her, for those four or five months, and we ended up making enough money to pay for our rent for the entire year and also having a little money, you know, to, you know, do other things to, you know, you know, to go from that point. But from there, we just kept going, man. Welcome to the Gino J Podcast. I am your host, Gino J, AKA the Construction King. And on this podcast, I'm going to be interviewing other successful entrepreneurs. And on today's episode, I have a very special guest for you. He's a very successful entrepreneur. He's a serial entrepreneur. He owns Fearless Athletics, which is a gym that helps people focus on their health and get in shape. Him and his wife also own a very successful event space called The Union. He also is a coach and a motivator of young men. I want to present to you now, Mr. Renard Roth. Hello, hello, how you doing, man? I appreciate the introduction, my man. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So what i like to do, man, is get other successful entrepreneurs like yourself on the show. Man, we're gonna shoot some pool, we're gonna have some drinks, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna talk a little bit about business. A lot of times as entrepreneurs, man, we always see the good side of business or you see the success stories, but I like to talk about the success stories, but also take a deep dive in what were some of the challenges you had to face because we can learn a lot from each other's failures. Right. And so that's what this show is about, man. And it's also gonna be an opportunity to shine a light on what you and your wife are doing, man. We're gonna get into your backstory a little bit, but you play pool, brother? Hey, let's go. Let's get it. I can play pool. Man, you the guest, so. It's on you. All right, here we go. Let's go with the break. Let's see what you got, my man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I see you. I see you. There we go. There we go. What I drop? Right, you, you already Solid. got a, a yeah, two drop. Okay, okay. So for the viewers, man, let's get into your backstory, man. I know you've been in entrepreneurship for quite some time. How did it all come about, man? What was the start that pushed you to get into entrepreneurship? Man, I truly honestly say that it just came from just wanting more. You know how you travel and see other things and you just kind of feel like it's just got to be more out there. And uh, when I started off, I was teaching school. Um, I graduated with a CIS degree and um, I just, just wanted more, man. And I just started looking for other things that I could do on the side. And I just kind of used those things, uh, which was actually tax preparation. Um, I started doing that and I just used that into that end up taking over my salary as a teacher. And from that point, I became an entrepreneur. Awesome, man. So when you, when you, when you first started in the entrepreneurship, man, because like when you see people online or whatever, everybody makes it seem so easy. What was that, what was that first year, that journey like, even when you got into tax preparation? Man, um, I mean, like you say, you still working your job, which is going to be from seven to three or seven to four. Well, I was coaching. So from seven to seven to seven to eight. And then from there, that's when you can work on your your hustle or your side thing. You know, so you're talking about 12, 14, 15 hours days every day. And, you know, if you have a regular job, you probably get the weekends off. But nah, not as an entrepreneur, like, you know, Saturday, Sunday, you still grind it. You got clients or whatever it is. You're still working towards, you know, whatever your goals are. So I can say I was really, really busy, you know, during those times when I was doing you know, entrepreneurship and working my job for sure. So that sounds like a lot, man. And, you know, I tell people all the time, like, like we just mentioned, it's not easy. But what 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 kept you motivated and what were some of your, your you know, your, your reasons on why 
this was so important to you? Man, like, you know, I'm solid. Things that kind of motivate you, 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 you always get inspired by other entrepreneurs. You know, like I said, you, you're looking at celebrities, people like Russell Simmons, and you always have an entrepreneur that's in the city or something that kind of motivates you because you see their lifestyle and you just see the things they do. So that and just want to create a legacy. I kind of like truly felt that I cannot create wealth while being on a job. Um, so I just kind of always wanted to choose profits over wages. Um, I learned that from my man, it was my Jim Ron. You know, that's that one of the guys, you know, Jim Ron, one of the, my, I can say my mentor, but one of everybody's mentors, self motivator. So when I kind of studied that and heard profits over wages, it just took me to the point where I just know that I wanted to shoot for. Go ahead and get this in. 13. Don't give it to me. I'm going so, three so in the corner. As an entrepreneur, man, um, what was what was one of the biggest hurdles you had to overcome early in the game getting started? I truly would say time management. Um, at the time, I had a two-year-old daughter. Um, I just got a divorce, and like I say, I was working and I was coaching. And then at the same time, I was trying to do tax preparation on the side. So time management was really big at the time. And once I learned, you know, about a to-do list and having your appointment book and things like that, that kind of kind of streamlined me and helped me kind of organize. But I really feel like time management is going to be one of your biggest assets as being an entrepreneur. If you are able to manage your time, then you're able to kind of, you know, speed up your goals or be successful in the things that you're looking to do. Man, speaking on speaking on that, man, like, you know, you say you went through a divorce and that was at the time of when you was first getting into entrepreneurship. You know, I know your wife now, Nicole, man. Um, I'm seeing what y'all do. It's definitely been inspiration for me and my wife, man. But let's talk about that a little bit, man. Like, how important is it to have a good partner by your side, bro? Man, what can I say? Like... Coming out of that divorce and a couple of things that I did was I got into yoga. I got certified in yoga foundations and that kind of got me into the mindset of doing meditation and things like that. So once I was able to just understand me, then I kind of like I wasn't searching for anyone. And they feel like me and my wife, Nicole, we just kind of came together like we just bonded together and having a partner that's someone that understands you and let you just be who you are. You're able to push to wherever limits you're trying to go. You know, you're not able to, to you know, sit here and trying to be someone that you're not. So I just really, truly are blessed to have a partner like Nicole because every business that we have done, we've done it as a team, as a partnership. Like it wasn't like I'm here, I'm there. We always work together to try to reach our goals. And I just, I'm excited about the future. Like I said, I met you through, you know, partnership with your wife and Nicole. So I mean, it's just like I said, it's always, a circle of just blessings around just having a partner like that for sure yeah guys if you're enjoying this content smash that like button and if you want to fast track your real estate investing career check out our membership it's less than one dollar a day so let's get into it man so how did y'all actually meet yeah definitely so um i'm from montgomery alabama so i ended up going to alabama state university which is in montgomery alabama um she's from biloxi mississippi and she ended up going to alabama state as well i ended up graduating leaving the yard and i'm like three years older than her and for me being going back to like i'm a fraternity cap alpha Psi, for me going back to the different events and things like that i end up seeing her around the yard and from that point we kind of met and from that point we end up um, dating for five years. Um, we started a promotional business at first. That's how the union came about because we was actually, I was the general manager of an event space and she was the um, event coordinator. So we was like together doing that together. So that was like our beginning of, you know, seeing how we work, how good we work together. So uh, that's crazy that you say that. That's kind of make, bring back memories. But uh, from that point, um, you know, so we got married in 2009. All these things I'm telling you happened between 2004 and 2009. And um, a crazy story is that I was teaching, she was a paralegal, and we got married in September of 2009. Um, I was doing taxes for about two years at this time on the side. 
So she was pregnant. She was like four months pregnant, say December 2009. So I just told myself that, look, I need to grow. And I felt like Montgomery, Alabama was not letting me grow. So we ended up moving to Atlanta, December 2009. She was four months pregnant. We both left our jobs. We just put in our two weeks notice. We came to Atlanta, rented out a town home. I end up opening up a satellite office in South DeKalb Mall. If everybody knows what South DeKalb Mall is on Camelot <laughs> yeah. Road. Um, I mean, it was such an experience, but I ended up opening up a satellite office just like a kiosk in the middle of the mall right in front of Foot Locker. My whole thing was I knew that my target market was EIC or you know our income credit tax clients and I feel like I can be there to capture capture those clients So me and her with her being pregnant We ended up opening that kiosk and we worked in that mall me and her for those four or five months And we ended up making enough money to pay for our rent for the entire year And also having a little money, you know to you know do other things so you know, you know to go from that point But from there we just kept going man, but that's a dope story to see, hear how y'all built man that's a little similar to like me and my wife man you know we met and i reflect back now and i'm so happy like to have met someone early in my career mm -hmm. that you can get a chance to build with right you know what i'm saying because right. when we met i was still driving a ragley ford ranger <laughs> we both live in paycheck to paycheck and um you know again looking for a way out looking for opportunities to make more money and live a life by design and we tried a lot of different stuff, man. We tried to open up a bunch of different businesses that failed. Man, at one point, man, we, we, we had a lawn business um, that got kind of crazy. We opened up uh, um, a uh, medical billing business. Wow. That, that did okay for a while, and then like, it, it kind of got crazy. We also had a, um, a online store. This was early, 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 early. Uh, when online stores just popped up, man, we had, man, we tried probably 15 different businesses. Right. But the thing about business is that you just can't, and we learned this over time, you just can't do stuff for money. Mm -hmm. um, you have to find something that you're passionate about. That's right. And it wasn't until we found real estate and we found that it was really our passion that we was willing to, to go the extra mile and put the work in to see it through to become successful exactly. because when times get hard, like you got to lean on your grind and your work ethic and push through it to get through it. But you got to be passionate about what you're doing or, or, you, or it's easy to quit if you're just doing it for the money. Right, 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 right. And I truly honestly believe that because with me, it's on you, bro. Show shot. With me starting off with tax preparation, you know, of course, you're just doing taxes. But I kept seeing that a lot of people were wanting to get into the industry um, and with them wanting to get into the industry me helping them out i had to pivot to try to you know help these clients out so now since i've been doing this since 2009 actually i am a reseller of income tax software so, and what this helps me do is now the same people that wanted to do taxes now i'm able to help them which is my always my passion because like, i'm a coach i'm always about just helping 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 trying to you know build people up so i'm now i'm able to sell the software help them out and let them you know go in their thing and that's how i kind of got into fitness because it's the same concept you know seeing you know what our community is doing as far as health and as far as you know just where they are at this time that's what kind of motivated me to get into the fitness side of the journey but like i say whatever you put on your mind gotta kind of just place it there like it, it's a crazy story how i got into the fitness industry i just dreamed about it because i was always an athlete but to be able to you know make it become fruitation it was really truly a story from you know that that came through you know god's grace for sure absolutely man speak about um the fitness part of things man i know you also you know mentor and coach a lot of youth man with football and track all right, guys, so if you're enjoying this content, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on this video. And if you want to take it another step further, join our membership. It's less than $1 a day. So cool, man. Let's, let's stay on that subject of fitness, man. I'm um, going to dig a little deeper, bro. I know you have a gym. Tell us about the gym. How did that come about, man? So I honestly can say, like I say, for me, because I went to Alabama State on a football scholarship, so I played football. And of course, you're playing football. Everybody think, hey, I'm going to the league. I'm going to the league. But at the same time, you know, it's your passion. But you really, you want to go to the league because you want to change 
your lifestyle for you and your family. You want to change your legacy. So I always felt like, hey, no matter what, I'm going to change that part. If it's not the league, if it's not, et cetera. But because I was in that space, I always was coaching. I always was training. I always was helping other athletes out. I always was studying, you know, just about different exercises and things like that. And um, when, when I moved to Atlanta, I lost all of that because I was so focused on trying to just, you know, um, you know, make sure provide for my family. And my wife got pregnant for the second time and I ended up gaining like 25 pounds. So I ended up joining a CrossFit gym. And when I joined the CrossFit gym, my whole goal was just to, hey, look, I want to be healthy because I was having a son and I was not going to let this dude like run around and be more athletic than me. So that was my main goal. So that was my motivation. But as I was training at this gym for about a year and a half, I ended up losing the weight. And the owner just walked up to me one day and said, hey, man, I'm looking to get out the business. Um, do you think about you want to, you know, buy the gym? And I was like, what do you mean? You know, why do you feel like it's me? He was like, hey, just looking at your, you know, your leadership in the gym. And I think you'll be a good candidate. I know you're an entrepreneur. Like, this is something you're looking forward to. And I was automatically, I said, yes. So me and him end up making a deal where I'm there purchasing all of his equipment from him. And um, that's how the gym came pretty much, pretty much. I just kind of took over his whole book of business, the equipment. And I ended up being in the same building he was in and everything. And um, that's a whole nother story because you know where I'm at now. I was at, over there, um, McDonald Parkway. So I was over there doing, you know, in that facility. But I ended up moving to the facility I met you at um, after a time where, because at that time, my rent was only $1,200 a month. Wow. So imagine that. Because like, you really can have, it was a good profit margin there. But I was next to a MMA boxing gym. So what they decided to do when I became the owner, because they all were partners, they decided to do the same type of exercises that I was doing in my gym. So they ended up opening up a CrossFit gym on next door to me. So it's two CrossFit gyms next door to each other. This is my first year in business. So I'm there like, what am I going to do? Yeah. And to be honest, we barely made it. We just was just going, you know, step by step because it was just so much cross marketing. It was so hard for clients to know which business you know they can choose from so i ended up taking another step out on faith and moving over to the facility i'm at now on jonesboro road which took my rent up almost 300 percent. so i was almost like at around four to five thousand dollars for rent but i took the faith i jumped out and my business has been growing ever since um because we're in a better location because of course location is going to be your foot traffic you've been around other brands that are recognizable by other you know other uh you know you, you know your, your brand recognition so i think that was one of the best decisions i ever made by just taking you know taking a step on faith and moving over to the to, to the uh, facility i'm at right now 1873 jonesboro road and that's, that's that's the dope story man because a lot of times when when God puts an idea or something in our minds and we have a dream about it it don't come with a roadmap or a blueprint so oh. but but if it's there it's there for a reason and you have to just trust the process and take the faith and use your intuition and um, it always seems to kind of work out but it was a pivot man um, I know we got you know people interested probably in opening the gym what is what is it what what's the day to day first of all if somebody was was trying to open in the gym what advice would you give them how hard is it to open a gym what what are they to start um that process on maybe getting a gym up and running so i truly would honestly say that it's a billion dollar industry so long as you're in a location that you can be competitive far as where you want to be as far as like you know your price range and that's going to be far as your salary you know that type of things but um long as you do that research then there's it's unlimited is this is adaptable to adaptable anywhere like as you you can do it in the state of georgia the state of iowa the state of michigan so it's really just going to be on once you pick a location and they'll do the research as far as your competition around and the per capita once you do that a gym is you can put it anywhere Got you, got you. Now, um, are there any type of loans or you would recommend somebody doing um, like what what if I'm starting from scratch and I found a location, what would be my like my next step on figuring out like how to actually get the funds to put one together? 
Definitely, definitely. So I would honestly say that, of course, as being an entrepreneur, you have to make sure that your credit is right. Once you make sure that your credit is right, you're now you're able to leverage your credit to be able to get different credit cards. Um, you also can get with different vendors and stuff that you can get different credit lines with. Um, like, for instance, Rogue is a very big vendor that sells pretty much all type of equipment from your racks to your benches to your weights to your dumbbells. So with you leveraging your credit and getting, you know, a account with them, you're able to, you know, supply the equipment that you need for your gym. Um, and then from that point, you know, you can have a monthly payment that you can kind of put into your fixed costs where you can be able to pay these things back. So um, I would definitely say that, you know, making sure that your credit is on point, um, building relationships with banks and credit unions. That's always um, good you know, advice as well, because you can maybe get a lump sum loan to be able to pay for some other things that you might want to do, like marketing or um, signs and, I mean, you know, different things like that far as, you know, the, the, the build out. Got you. Got you. What are some of, um, I mean, I know with any business, man, there are always perks, but it always are challenges. What are some of the challenges that you faced as a, as a, as a gym owner? As a gym owner, when people think about the gym, it's not like priority. You know, it's so many different things that's going on in their life. So a gym membership is not really going to be priority. It's only going to be priority to them to when they, you know, got somewhere they gotta go, or the doctor already told them they're sick. You know, it's not in their brain. And so it kind of goes with seasonal, like right now from January to uh, October or so, I will have a, you know, a, a good a good traffic. And then around November, you know, around the end of the under the year, it could slow down due to holidays and, you know, shopping and things like that. So being a business owner with you knowing those things, you just have to prepare yourself and budget your, you know, your, your different expenses and, 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 you know, your profits to make sure that you're able to, um, you know, survive and, and still be profitable for the 12 months. So I would definitely say that was one of the things that I kind of recognize that people are, you know, um, they don't put health as a priority to them, which they should. It should be the number one thing because without health, how are you going to build wealth or how are you going to be able to enjoy all the fruits and things that you're out here working for every day? So I, I would say that you need to make sure that you prioritize health because with that, that's going to help you be more successful. It's going to help you be, you can reach your goals faster because your mindset, your body, everything will be working at the uh, rate that you need to be able to reach your goals. Man, health is definitely wealth, man. I've got about 30 pounds off me in the last like six months and yes. still got something to go, but feel like a new person, man. Guys, if you're enjoying this content, smash that like button. And if you want to fast track your real estate investing career, check out our membership. It's less than $1 a day. The other thing, and just kind of keeping it all in the same space in the wheelhouse, know you married, got different businesses, man. How do you, how do you, how do you maintain, I know you work out all the time, but how do you maintain that balance to stay mentally sharp, balancing, you know, wife, family, kids, union, the union, the event space, the gym, you know, other stuff you got going on, man. What's that balance like for you? Man, to be honest, um, I truly are thankful for me learning the yoga because that kind of helps me mentally and the meditation and the, all the different audio books that people like you have recommended or just things like that. I kind of it helps you be in a positive mindset, because if you be in a positive mindset, then you're able to make better decisions. Your decisions are not going to be negative because your mindset is only focused on what you want to do, not what you have to do. The things that we do every day, like you say, is because I want to do them and I'm passionate about it. I'm waking up at 4.15 a.m. I'm being at the gym at 5 a.m. training some clients. Um, I'm going to be there to probably about 10 or so and work out at 10 and then around 12 or 1. I'm back at the house making sure I get some nutrition, eating good. Then I'm going to coach track around 3 a.m., 3 p.m., going back to the gym at 5 p.m. But all these things I love to do. And then I get off around 7. And from there, I'm back at home with my family, spending time with my family, making sure that, you know, homework is done, making sure the chores are done, just spending time with them. And I'm going to get up and do it all over again. But that's exciting to me. You know, uh, other people, I don't know. But I just, just to me, that's what I 
have passion and, and love to do. So um, I really truly just like I say, just knowing people like you and I can get up on Instagram and see someone where I saw go from, you know, being a real estate agent to being a mogul that just motivates me um, every day to keep going. Like, I know he's not complaining. So why am I going to complain? So um, all those things are what I think feels like that helps me motivate me to just keep doing it every day. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, because it is hard to balance all that stuff, man. And a lot of times as as black men, we don't we don't ask each other, you know, we say what's up, but we we don't never dig deep and say, hey, man, bro, you, you good? How everything going for you? How you feeling today? How you, you know, we just it's just it just hasn't been in our in our nature, man. Everybody think we supposed to be good, but sometimes, mm -hmm. man, we go through shit where we just we just tend to kind of deal with it. Um, but that's 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 dope, man. That that that's dope on how you balance that, man. So transitioning, man, of course, real estate, real estate, real estate, man. I've been in real estate for 17 years. I know you got some investment properties. You're also investing in, you know, real estate as well. Man, I got some other questions for you. I'm going to say those are upstairs. But for right now, it's time for me to get you off this table, bro. Let me go in and get a seat. And do you say you like it, y'all? You're all perfect, right? Hey, that's, that's why I brought you here, man. About competition. Ooh. Oh man, they ball. Hey, sometimes it's like that, bro. You bro, else is um, um, yeah. rolling that dice. It's just business. Got to clear. Got to take that risk. All right, guys, so if you're enjoying this content, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on this video. And if you want to take it another step further, join our membership. It's less than $1 a day. All right, cool, man. Let's get back into it, man. We got some tequila here. I know we've been drinking that Don, man. I'm going to stay with the Don. Pour a little something on myself. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Get you topped off a little bit, man. Yes, sir. So let's transition into the real estate, man. Of course, you got the event space. There's a lot of people out there looking to get into e the event space. First of all, what made you want to get to the event space? So it kind of goes back to the backstory. You know, when I was in Montgomery, me and my wife, before we got married, I was, we ran out of event space. I was the general manager and she was the event coordinator. And from that point, you know, we learned the ins and outs of the business. And that was always our motivation. We knew that at the end of the day, we always wanted to do an event space. Uh, we tried before and the opportunity just didn't, you know, because I said, I was telling you I was moving Fearless Athletics to the to, to Jonesboro Road, but we was going to take the other location and we were going to do our event space. So we started doing the build out. I mean, we painted the walls all black, painted the ceiling all black, and then the owner came and said, hey, y'all got to get out. Just, he was like, we own the building. We're going to rent it out to somebody else. We're going to void your contract and y'all got to get out. Wow. So, I mean, it was like, we were ready to do it then, but I guess God wasn't ready for it. And from that point, like I said, we're Fearless Athletics. And right next door is my, my guy, Smoothie, Smoothie Group. We have a nutrition spot right next door to Fearless Athletics. And from that point, he ended up moving to another location. So the location next door to my gym was wide open. And uh, from that point, we knew that we was just thought about it. We was like, hey, this might be the opportunity where we can do the event space. And we end up uh, opening it up and doing it. Absolutely, man. That's, that's, that's cool how that all kind of worked out. Um, I know you have some experience from, from previously, so you do come into the space with some experience. If I'm new, I'm asking these questions because I, too, have thought about going into the event space. Right. And I got a bunch of rentals, but the misconception is if you have rental properties, you're making a lot of cash on Right. Honestly, I don't make that much cash flow on my rentals. I'm lucky that I'm in the green that is in here because these properties only cash flow three to five hundred dollars a month, if that. And if I have a warrior to go out or expense that property, that shit gonna be negative in here. Right, right, right. So we're looking to make more transition into assets or things that are gonna produce cash flow. Right, right. Because cash flow is king, equity is king, but you gotta have some type of balance. So I say all that to say. If I'm looking to get into an event space, how does that journey start? Like, what do I need to be looking for first? 
So the first thing is definitely going to be the research. Uh, once you research the area, see if you have any competition. Um, once you find out, you know, the ins and outs far as like, you know, the leasing agreement and things like that, then it can be anywhere because everybody is always looking to do something. You have birthday parties, you have uh, baby showers, graduation. I mean, you just keep naming, we have repads. Uh, we have things that just come up all the time. I can just keep naming events after event after event. And you can get really creative with having an event space. So um, like I said, I love that. That's one of the best business that everything we've done this has been the, one of the best opportunities we've ever done because of the fact that we've been in black since day one. Once you open the doors, the sky's the limit because like you say, Thursday through Sunday, maybe even Monday through Sunday, you can have opportunity to have some type of event in that space. And that's what's up, man. So I'm looking for, I've, I've researched the area. There's not a lot of competition in the area what other things go into that research outside of competition? So of course the branding and the marketing is gonna be on you, but as far as once you figure out that you don't have any competition in that area, then I would say the location is gonna be the key. Uh, once you look at your location as far as parking, as uh, far as being like uh, brand recognition, being around other different other brands that are recognizable, I think once you do that, then you can be in a prime location where you can pretty much, you know, corner the market. And not say be a monopoly, but at the same time, be the go-to place in that area that, um, you know, that 10 to 15 mile radius that uh, look for a good space. This is the spot I need to go to. Man, I think that was a real, real gym, man. Being around other brands, brand recognition. So when they pull up and they see the public for whatever, because that, you can capture a lot of traffic from that. And that's, that's a real deal. Oh, that's definitely. Deal. definitely. Uh, I, I, that's one thing we've noticed, like just from the, uh, uh, the point of the Fearless Athletics, once we got into a place where our uh, marketing, we can say, hey, we're the Target Shopping Center. We're in behind Starbucks. Just because we're recognized with those brands, they kind of put us in that same brand recognition. So I would definitely say that as a, there's a, like I said, a GM that if you look for a bed space, if you can put your location in that area, that's going to tend to be, you know, things you're looking for. Everybody's always looking for parking. They're always looking to be safe at a bed space, you know, things like that. So with being in those brand recognition, that'll be a place where you can be and you can be, you know, hit all those things at one time. So basically, just don't go rip some bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> Think exactly. you're gonna cash flow with a headspace. Don't do that. Don't do it. Like I said, because you know what we see is, man. I, I keep saying parking, but that that's like one of the most you know important things because with the event space, you want to be able to cater to. We have one year old birthday parties to a hundred birthday party. So if you have someone that is 100 years old, you can't be in a, a location where they're not able to, you know, pull up front, come straight in, and then their guest is gonna be pretty much around that same category. So you wanna be able to cater to everybody. And that's gonna be one of the things that we kind of people get people focus on is parking the same. Okay. The other question I have, man, is that, and I know there, there are different ways to do it, I know people that have purchased, I also know people that have leased. I've never really thought about leasing until I've seen you lease the building. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you get any thought to purchasing, but um, what was the advantage of trying to lease it versus actually trying to purchase it? So like you said, with the leasing part of it, as long as you know the square footage and you can know the square footage per dollar, then you can kind of know how you're going to build out your invoices or what you're going to charge. And you automatically know that once you get the information from the, from, from the landlord. But with far as like building, of course you can do it, but it's just going to take you a longer time. If it's going to be a single unit, it's going to be multiple units, you know, so, that, so it's really kind of the, the different things that kind of associated with you doing either you're going to build it yourself or if you're going to be in the lease it. So like I say, that is really the main thing as far as like knowing your square footage, what the square footage is and then knowing how many people you can get in there and you can know what you're, you can charge, you can see, you know, what your fixed costs are and what you can make some profit. Gotcha. So understanding the square footage of it, knowing what you can charge. Um, with that being said, leasing, you know, leasing potentially is a better option for somebody to get started. If you're looking at, and I know every, everywhere is different because every, everywhere charges different rent based on location. Um, on average, what would you say somebody need in terms of capital 
to get started in the event space industry. So the good thing about an event space, it's a blank, it's a blank campus. You want to be able to get into an event space, leave everything as, as, as uh, normal as possible. Like, you know, your walls want to be white. Uh, you want to just rent some tables and chairs. But what that lets you do is you don't have to pretty much install commercial equipment and, you know, things far as like, as far as the people to, to cook and things like that, as far as industrial. So that lets you, your build out be pretty affordable. Um, so I would say just to build out and equipment and, you know, I'm not equipment, but like tables and chairs, the investment should be around between 30000 to $50,000. And it really depends on location and how much square footage it is. But from that point, I think you definitely can get a, a thin space over. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, what, are some, what are some of the, I guess, what's that cash flow like, man? Let's just get right into it. Right, 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 right. So right. let's break down the union, bro. Like, what is the rent? What's your overhead? And then what's that cash flow look like? Exactly. So this is say rent is around three thousand dollars a month. Um and each event can be between twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a uh, event. So, you know, we try to cap our events out at between four to five hours. So on Saturday and Sunday we try to get two events in, you know, from twelve to six, seven to twelve, things like that. So the main goal is to try to get 15 to 25 events um, and if you can stay in that price range then like you said you look at that you know if you do the number to see yeah. you know, if you if your rent is three thousand and you don't really have a lot of expenses associated with it you know you have your your, your common stuff like your utilities and things like that um if you have a house manager uh, we kind of do a lot of things ourselves because you know it's, it's just not a really a um, you know, large space so you know you can be between 10 to twenty thousand dollars in the black profit it's really going to be on you your space and you know what well, often it is as far as what people are looking that's what's up bro it sounds like that damn event space is is definitely a play for cash flow yeah. and it's something that if you find the right location you got the right branding and you got all the right research you can really you know, make some good money in that event space. I get calls all the time um, about, do I do event spaces and different things? You definitely have the knowledge in the game for it. You got the blueprint, you got the blueprint for it. So my idea to you is let's come up with a course and a program to show people how to actually get, get, it, get it going. Okay, okay, that sounds good. Um, I definitely, like I say, step by step, it's uh, definitely a market for it. Um, you can put them anywhere. It's kind of like the gym. There's always a need, so that sounds good. So y'all stay tuned. You heard it here first on the Gino J Podcast here with my boy, Renard Ross. We are coming out with an event space course, and it's going to give y'all the blueprint from start to finish, all the pitfalls you need to avoid to be successful, so stay tuned, man. It's coming soon. So I know as an entrepreneur, man, you try a lot of different things. As, as myself, I've tried a lot of stuff. Yeah. And sometimes you try 10 things before you get that one thing that hits and be successful. We've talked about um, the fearless athletics on the, your success with that, the event space success. But tell me one of your failures. Like what, what have you done in the past, whether it's a business or whatever, what have you failed in? Yeah, definitely, man. I actually purchased a franchise. It was called Sweet Charlie's. It was a uh, rolled ice cream. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, I just thought it was a great idea. Uh, when I first seen the concept, it was like 2018. Uh, it was just open here in Georgia, and I used to go every weekend take my kids. So I was like, man, this is it. I see the margin, I know we can do it. Uh, but then when I inquired about it, I was not able to open up any offices here in Georgia. I'm from Alabama, so I'm like, whatever, we'll take it to Alabama. So I ended up opening up a franchise, Sweet Charlie's uh, the Ice Cream Shop in Alabama. And I let my, my father and one of my business partners in Alabama, we ended up, I let them pretty much run the show. Mm -hmm. And I said 2018, right? So we opened 2020 and what happened? COVID hit, boom. Oh. COVID hit, and I mean, what can we say? I mean, everybody went through the same concept. We just don't know. Every day was a challenge, you know what I'm saying? And um, that business failed. I ended up having to close the doors. I have everything in storage right now. And I'm thinking every day of what I'm gonna do next with that equipment, because I still have it. But uh, that was-
they, you know, it was a time where we all as, as entrepreneurs, we all were going through it. And to have a business on top of that, knowing how you're going to pay the employees every week, how you're going to be able to keep the power on, you know, all those different things are coming up daily. And uh, like I said, that was really a tough time. And those are the times you have to kind of go back and rely on everything that got you to that point. Um, all of your positive thinking, all the affirmations that you've done, everything that you've done as far as your self-improvement, as far as reading, you know, so you have to implement those things at that time. You're not reading them just to be reading them. You're reading and storing this information to be applicated. You have to be able to apply them to your daily life. So those are the times I had to rely on all those things that just keep me going. And I truly can say that it made me a better person. Um, you know, made me a better man all the way around because, you know, when you, you as an entrepreneur, you wear all the hats from maintenance to Thanks. CEO. So only thing you can do at that time or in those times is rely on your training. And uh, like we talked about a few minutes ago, if you're an entrepreneur and you talking about, I've been in real estate for two years, you're telling me that story. I'm like, two years, you're, you're still a baby. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, you got to think about it in the terms of being a doctor. How long does it take to become a doctor? That's the same kind of stuff you need to look at when you're being an entrepreneur. And you may probably need to add another two years to it. If it takes a doctor eight years, then you probably need to add two years before you become the master or the expert in that field. But once you become that, hey, the sky's the limit. You're gonna be paid your value, not hourly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, hey, keep pushing, focus on your your goals, and you'll become the expert and the master one day. That's a dope story because when in school, you get the lesson first and then you get the test. In the real world, we get the test first right. and then we get that that L, which is that lesson. Right. And there's always a lot of value that comes from those lessons. What's one valuable thing you would say you learned from that situation uh -huh. that might have contributed to success in another situation? So I would say that I learned how to because usually i would pay employees like 1099 to contract work but from this point i end up doing payroll so i learned so much about just corporations and about taxes and federal taxes and state taxes so that was one thing i learned um scheduling understanding how to schedule clients based off you know revenue and times of the day so that kind of picked up on me far as be able to help you implement that in different you know um you know um, um, businesses and then also negotiating my real estate build out i never knew anything about build out but because it was like a slash restaurant we were able to build you know negotiate a price or or you know a, a check to come back to us once we finished and got our you know um, uh, coi and things like that so those different things helped me and i learned even though i didn't was successful in the business but the operations of the management and things like that helped me with other businesses so i really kind of like i say it's a lesson in everything like you say you might have failed the test but that lesson that you learned you're always going to pick up some nuggets pick up some training and things like that for you know, with the business or the opportunity yeah absolutely man i know you got a a, a few different ventures right now What's one thing you got coming up in the pipeline or what's a business idea or something that you have that you want to put to action in the near future? So to be honest, um, with me being in fitness, um, I was kind of the same concept when I was talking about with taxes. I have other clients that are outside of Georgia, McDonough, and they want to have access to training, nutrition, these different things. So right now I'm developing an app where I'll be able to implement the same thing we focus on fitness we focus on nutrition we focus on accountability and those are our three pillars and i think with those three things being on the app and being at an affordable rate i think we can help out a lot of people in you know all ever everywhere you know just not being stagnated at just this 10 to 15 mile radius um i think that that would totally you know help us out and then of course we just talked about the classes so we'll be able to help people all over about you know be able to open up their own event space so those two things right now i think is going to you know keep me motivated expired and ready to go to the next level the app's definitely a good idea man one thing i've learned as an entrepreneur is that what you're doing today may not work in six months or a year from now so we always have to pivot and stay ahead of the market and a lot of that's due to technology I mean, you look at how AI is changing so many things. I just saw on Instagram, there's like a restaurant out west in California that's pretty much all all robots. Wow. And so as entrepreneurs, man, we, we have to lean into technology and take the pieces out of it that can really help us grow 
and scale our business, man. So commend you on doing the app, man, because yeah. the world is a lot smaller, man. And by utilizing that technology, man, that's definitely a way to to grow and expand, man. No doubt, no doubt, yeah. no doubt. I know we talked about a lot of great stuff, man. Uh, a lot of good gems. I appreciate you coming on the show. I know you're a busy man and probably got a role. Again, guys, this is the Gene OJ Show, AKA Gene OJ, the construction king. On this podcast, we're gonna be bringing more entrepreneurs. Ross dropped a lot of good gems, a lot of good nuggets. We appreciate you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys on the next episode.